Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about Nox3. Nox3 is out and it's in public beta, but we can go ahead and play around with it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be building a newsletter sign-up form with Nox3, Tailwind CSS, and Superbase. Let's dive in. All right, let's get started. So right here, I have uh, the Nox3 documentation, but I'm really not going to use it because I wrote a blog post that is going to walk us through the exact things we want to do today which is pairing Noctry with Tailwind CSS and Superbase. Uh, as you can see, it's still not published. It's a deploy preview from Netlify, but I want to go ahead and follow the instructions that I've written in this blog post to see if it works exactly as I said. Um, so let's go over to VS Code and get started. So right here, okay, let me look at the instructions here. So create a Noctry project. I've gone ahead to do this, uh, which basically means run this command and then change into the project directory install the dependencies and run the development server. Um, I've gone ahead and done this part, creating the Noctree project, just so that I can buy myself a few more minutes uh, to talk about the rest. Uh, this is the project right here. And at the moment, if I do a uh, yen dev, I should have it running locally. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, let me check that. And there we go, we have our Nox3 project running. So I'm going to close the terminal real quick so that we have more space. All right, um, okay, back to the, to the blog post. The next thing I want to do is add Tailwind CSS to this project. And to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this line. And then back in my project, I can open up, how do I add more? Okay, that's that's how. And then I'll do this and run the command to install uh, Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and the auto prefixer. While that's going on, um, I'm going to copy this next command. That's done. Let me just close this real quick. So I'll clear this and what this does is basically clean the uh, config file for us at the root of the project. And there, there you go, this is it. And the next thing we want to do, uh, according to the blog post is update this file that we just created with this entire thing. Actually, I'm going to copy it. Well, let me just get the porch file because that's the only thing that's different from what we already have. So I'll put all the files that I want uh, that I want Tailwind to purge for me uh, when I'm when I'm deploying this site to production. Now save that. Oh no, that's not what I want to save. The next thing you want to do is create a CSS file and update it with this snippet. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, let me stop my server for this one. So I'll stop the development server because sometimes if I save, I've noticed that when I was when I'm working with uh, Nox3. Sometimes if I save while I'm working, things just end up going not the way I expect them to. Uh, so I do stop the server and then I make my changes before I start off, if I start it off again. So I'll save this and back in my project root, I'll create a new assets folder. You can create this however you want, just that I, I like having my CSS folder inside an assets folder. And then all the CSS files I want can come in there. In this case, I want to create a tailwind.css file. And that's where I paste uh, the code I just copied, which is this one. So I do this here and save that. All right, what's next? Um, finally, we need to tell Nuxt how to do this, how to find it. Okay, cool. So we've already created this file and that's done. So what I want to do is update my Nuxt config file with this snippet that I have here. So let me just do that real quick. Save that. And I think that's it. So here I'm just kind of like telling Nox.js where to find my, my Tailwind CSS file by doing this. Uh, alternatively, you can do it by specifying the route to your CSS file inside app.view. So if I come to app.view, I could uh, make a script tag. Actually, why do I have to type all of that? Let me 
do this. This is another way to um, import the, to tell Nox to use this uh, Tailwind file in your entire project. But I'm not a fan of this one. I mean, this is the, the, the advised one. I was reading through a GitHub comment and I saw where the creator of Nox uh, was saying that this is the right way to go about it. Yes, right here. So in order to get access to hot module reloading, you should uh, you should specify the route to your Tailwind file inside app.view, but it works for me either way, to be honest. So I will just keep this one out of the way. And I mean, I, I'm not sure, so I'm just going to test it out first and see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll, I'll specify this one. I just want to like let you know that there are two ways to, to do that. Okay, uh, so what do I need to do to test this out? Let me get a Tailwind file somewhere. And let me quickly get this out of the way. This is probably an about, uh, nope, nope, I don't need a script yet. What do I have here? No, no, get rid of all of this. Actually, I don't need any of this. What else do I have here? I think that's all, so let me put hello world right here and save that. Okay, I'm going to try this again and see if we have any problems. If not, our Tailwind uh, should be installed successfully and we should now see that the page is a little bit more styled than it was before. Okay, so let's check this again. And there you go, hello world. So we have Tailwind working as expected. Cool, I'm going to stop the server again. Yeah, I know. And next, we want to install Superbase. Cool. So to do that, let's follow the instructions that I've written down, which is run this npm install command to add uh, Superbase to your Moxtree app, which I'll do right here. Actually, let me do it in this other one clear this out and install Superbase. All right, looks like uh, that's the only thing we need to do in terms of setting up Superbase. The next thing I want to do though is seeing that when you initialize Superbase, you will need to have access to your Superbase URL and your Superbase anon key. I'm just going to pause the video for a while and create those in a .env file so that I'll, I'll specify those variables here. I don't want you all to see it, it's a super big secret. So I'm going to pause the video now and then I'll fill up this file, then I'll get it off the screen. Great, so now that that is done, I've gone ahead and filled, out and filled in my variables right here in the environment variables. Uh, now that that is done, the next thing we want to do is create the newsletter subscription form with Tailwind. Uh, so I'm going to moment, get the actual form look at the Tailwind and paste file. Here from, all we have is just a, hello uh, a Tailwind text, file that I already uh, have. Do better somewhere. and just add the form that we uh, sign up is, our users. Oh, uh, no, this I'm not files yet. here were truncated, so I'm going to what get the actual there? form. Nothing. So I'll save this and then I'll go ahead and start my server again. And hopefully I didn't break anything. All right, it's running and warming up. I'll go all the way there. And then, there you go. So I have my subscription form. Great. Uh, what happens now is what I want to do is when the user provides their email and click on the subscribe button, what I want to do is I'll collect the email address that has been provided, send it to uh, my Noxtree server route, which will then uh, communicate with Superbase and store the user in my database. Right? Cool, let's do it. So I'll stop this once again. Uh, I'll get it off the screen and I'll come back to my blog post. And okay, looks like that is exactly what we got. Cool, working so far so good. I'll get it out of the way. And what do I need to do next? Save uh, the form data to Superbase. Cool. All right. So I have to set up the script section of this, uh, of the app.view file, which is supposed to handle the functionalities that I talked about. And this is how we do that. 
I'll just copy this to be honest. So what I'm doing here is I'm specifying a variable that will hold the response from our API route. I'm specifying a variable to hold the email that the user has provided. And then I'm specifying a function that will, be, that will get called when the button is clicked or when the form is submitted, basically to send uh, the, 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 the form, sorry, to send the email that the user has provided to this API route, which we haven't provided yet. But in the meantime, I'm going to uh, use the, the variables here in the template. So uh, where should I put this? Okay, let's say that when the response comes back from the server, I want to, I just want to log it out in the template, whatever it is, I want to print it out in the template. So let's do DB response right here. Yeah, just show it to me basically. Uh, user email, I want to V bind to it from here more like vmodel. So the user email. And uh, what else do we need to do? So let's come to the form and do submit. You know what, let's do prevent as well. And that should call post to DB like that. Uh, anything else I need to do? No. All right. I think that's it. So the next thing I want to do is if you see that I'm, I'm sending this, um, I'm sending the email to this API route, which doesn't already exist. It says hello, but I think I'll make mine subscribe. It's more intuitive that way. Subscribe. And then I'm sending it as part of the URL, just specifying email and then passing the value. So what I want to do now is come back here. And if you want to see how this works, actually, it's very well documented in the Nox tree documentation. If you go to, where is it? It's in docs. I think it's because I'm in, yeah. So if I come to docs, come to the server route, you will find out all the things you need to know about working with the Nox tree uh, API route there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and create it here, make a file, call it server. So make another folder inside of it and call it API. And inside the API folder, I can create my subscribe function and call it subscribe.js. Now this is where I'll post all of my, um, where I'll post my emails that, that the users uh, provide in the subscription form. From here, uh, when I get the email, I'll just post it to Superbase. Actually, I'm trying to keep this tutorial under 10 minutes and I think I'm open time. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this from, and copy this from my past project and put it here. I'll just make sure that I explain, I explain it line by line. So everything I'm doing here makes sense. So it's a, an async function. What I'm doing here is I'm specifying a query object variable that I will use to destructure the email out of the URL that is coming from the client, which is this one, basically. Let me save this actually. So I'm getting the email, this particular one, out of this uh, URL that is being that is calling the server. And then this is how I'm destructuring my uh, environment variables. I have the superbase URL and the superbase key saved there because I don't want you all to see it. It's a super important secret. Uh, then I'm doing this in a try a catch. Uh, I mean, it's development. You don't have to do that, but I just do it to be safe. So to initialize superbase, you just do this. It's in the superbase docs as well. Uh, I can actually show you. Oh, if I do that, you're going to see my keys. So I will not show you that, but this is how you, you initialize uh, Superbase to import the create client package from Superbase. And then you do this create client, you pass in the variable, you pass in the parameters. The first one being the Superbase URL and the second one being the Superbase key, which are all, which should all be available in your environment variables if you're doing it the same way I did mine. All right, so now that we, uh, that we know that the email is available in the query object, 
what I have to do is destructure it out of that query object and save it uh, and send it to my Superbase instance that I'm, what I'm doing here basically is specifying that I want to pass the data, the email, which I got from line, 20, line 12 here. So if I log this, I should get the email that was provided by the user in the client. So what I'm saying now is if this email exists, I want to save it to Superbase. And how I'm doing that is saying await superbase.from subscribers. Subscribers is the table that I've created in my Superbase demo project, which is this table, subscribers. And then I'm saying upsert, which simply means if the email that is provided already exists, just don't create a new record for it, basically. I mean, you can do any other uh, function here. It will all work. Uh, you, it's all like pretty intuitive if you look at the, the Superbase documentation for that. Uh, I shouldn't even be logging this, actually. So I'll get that out of the way. And then I'll update the, the global response variable so that I can send it back as a response to the user. And if there are any errors, I'll catch it and let you all know that there's been an error. So I'm going to save that. Uh, that's uh, a lot of, I, I, I think this is not so much, just about 29 lines of code uh, to, to get all that done. Uh, so let's let's try that again and see if, the, if it works as expected. Hopefully it does. If not, we'll find what the problem is. There you go. Okay, so I'll do this again. And now uh, what should happen is if I provide an email and click on subscribe, all of those things we talked about should happen. And then this array should get updated with a response from, from, data, from Superbase. And what should I do? Let's do john at do.com. Yeah, that's my email. So I click on subscribe and there you go. I have the response from the Superbase database but I have to also be sure that I got the record in my table. So I'll go, I'm going to refresh this. And we do in fact have that record 17 and John at do.com coming in as expected from here. So that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep this tutorial as, as small as possible and straight to the point as, as I can. Uh, what I wanted to show you is how to add Tailwind to Noctree applications and how to connect Superbase to work with uh, both your Tailwind application and your Noctree application. And I think uh, this tutorial is comprehensive enough to just do that and not delve into any more details. And that's it. Uh, please, if you find this video helpful, do go ahead and like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.